Alright, welcome to part two of the belt theory construction for Satisfactory. Um, people were talking about making main buses. Uh, I play a little bit of Factorio. I think that was one of the things that, that enjoyed the most was trying to get everything efficiently running through the base. You can see here I made a little uh, a looping primary belt that goes around the gas area here in the middle where, where it's toxic and I thought that would kind of be a fun way to uh, try and backstop all of our equipment or pull it off in any direction uh, at once and it just loops around and then it's going to end up coming into these storage units just to maximize space. Um, I'm not sending anything back onto the line but I've got all the sp spots here so if I wanted to take it take one of my products out of out of my storage units and run it back I'd be able to do so fairly efficiently and I've got it set up so it goes in the exact spots so this would be spot one that's spot two spot three and then spot four at the top and that's just a little bit over a little bit of that so I'm going to do this that would be a spot two and I would set all my product out of here and back onto the line and then just loop around um, if I want to store it I just take it back off the line so I can quickly take things down on either side. Um, when I say sides, I had had to divide up the line into two um, two sets of two, so it wouldn't be so high that you couldn't actually reach it, all the products or lag everything out dramatically. Because when everything's moving, it gets pretty gets pretty busy around here. So here I've got my raw materials and more used stuff near the bottom. Uh, on this one set, I have it running evenly on both sides, but I'm able to go over here, loop it up over or underneath because I left the bottom two rungs open, and I'm I'm able to um, pull the product off or add it onto the line or remove it back off by by shooting it over the top. Uh, it's a nice advantage to having it an inside and outside track on this loop, um, and it just constantly fills up or or will pull off as needed. Um, I think it works pretty well. I had to make, I started a second loop, I haven't finished it yet, but once I start getting into, on this server, getting into computer production, supercomputers, um, a lot more of my advanced materials will be on the outer loop, and I have it going all the way around uh, my iron setup over here, and then looping back around, and then it's going to be finished eventually and receive uh, back on the outside loop over here again. So I've got a double loop on the inside, a double loop on the outside, and I actually went on an Excel sheet and had to figure out where I wanted to place everything in my storage facility here in the middle. The nice thing about the storage facility is I'm right close to my uh, my hub. I can run over and grab any materials I want. Um, and an easy way to identify what I have is I'll just take a product and drop it outside of, of what the storage unit is so I can quickly run over and be like, oh, I need some more need some more iron ingots real quick I'll just go ahead and grab those or I need uh, let's say if I need to um, identify this as concrete here's my plates and my concrete bag um, it's easy to pick up and drop items so if I want to take it uh, let's say I've got 14 bags so I can if you right click your stack you can split it you can drag left or right uh, let's say I want to do a couple stacks of one here. I don't want to drop all my product at once. So I'm going to do three or four of these. And all you have to do to stack it is take it and just drag it off the side and it'll stack nice and evenly for you and nice and tall. So here I got four stacks just by setting them up, but I'm not wasting a hundred each. They're all just individual. So easy to identify what the product is. And, you know, you can really get into decorating with this. I think it's going to be awesome once I once I get around to it. Um, so that's a unrelated to belts, but a good decorating tip for later on. And a good way to identify your stuff uh, while things are still moving around. Over here, I did um, want to show you a little bit more about how the advanced splitters work, the smart splitters. Here I've got the left output going crude oil, the right output steel pipes and everything in the center is going just passing through. So here I've got everything coming back around and merging through and just demonstrating a, a splitter and a merger. I've got lots of stuff here and then all that's coming out on the other side is the oil. And only a few things going through on the, on the straightaway. My pipes are 
aren't making it through they're all going to the right and it's pretty fast too it, it splits up really good i'm not sure what the turbo engine's going to do on the other splitter the programmable one um it doesn't look to be too much different as far as how it works out but um i guess we'll have to wait and see also when you're standing on a splitter or a merger you can tell your your incoming side by these three lines or the yellow marker all your outputs are going to be identified with the green and the arrows pointing out hard to see there's your arrow here um, and you can see those on the sides as well uh, which way everything's going arrow 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 and your three dots for your input um, just a quick way to identify it from a distance Especially when nothing's moving or it's sitting static, uh, you at least be able to, to take your input and measure it out. So when you're talking about vertical builds, not just the belts itself, but the how to get stuff onto these um, conveyor poles stackable. One of my favorite things to do is, I think it looks pretty good. I take four across, I leave a space. There's, there's a double, that's how I do my double lines when I'm running my... Uh, when I'm running my belts, I think it looks pretty nice because you can have two together. Um, I'm going to leave a little gap in between each one. If I go one, two, three, four across, I can take my outside posts and run them upwards. Up and up. And then I'll take my belts and what I'm going to do is drive it out the back side and then up a level. On the back and then i can go up and up again and continue my way upwards if you were to just go straight you'd be looking at a distance of four so you're looking at four conveyor poles going straight through on each side one the original one plus one two three and then stack it and then that's the distance you'll have to get before you can go up to the next rung same thing again here, one, two, three, and then fourth one, you can go up two more rungs. Um, another thing too, once you get that set of eight distance, or I guess it's technically seven away, you can just run it straight from here on up to the second level without having that little weird divot in it. I did the same thing here, so you can see the original one, one, two, three, four, can go up one level and plus another one, two, three, and then the fourth one is your, your second level. Again, you can remove these and skip that middle one and just go straight from the end up to the second level and have a nice clean look instead. So that's a little helpful tip for you. Uh, I've done a few little designs over here, trying to mess around with some ways to get product up. This was kind of an interesting way I came up with to get six products up a hill using that weird design. It wasn't my best layout, but it seemed to look pretty good. This is, um, I actually have two products going up and two products coming down on this same set of belts. Uh, I like the way it looks. I think it's kind of neat. So I can get all this stuff going uphill on one end and it comes and loops all the way down and comes back around to the bottom. Um, and it's that same four by four configuration, except for since I'm running two products, I'm leaving one additional so this this one is four away from this set and this one is four away from that set and you can really cram a lot of stuff in um, I suppose you can probably do a third set in the middle there starting here and then working your way up it's gonna get a little crowded uh, so I don't know if you really want to do that plus with this idea there is a little bit of clipping on there so if you're a little bit OCD or something you might not want to do that route however um, I mean it's minor clipping and now unless you're running like wire for instance it probably won't be won't look very pretty clipping through everything all right over on my other server here you can see I ran these conveyor belts using that four by uh, four gap method and wove up to three sets of product going uphill at once so they're all iron ingots I've got them all running into three different levels of the floor starting with the base floor here 
Uh, let me see, I got the iron ore coming in. I'm sorry, the ingots going in there. I've got the ingots going in up two more levels. And those are all producing rods. Every one of them is producing rods. I've got rods on this floor and it's identical setup on all three floors above me. So two floors above me. Uh, rods, 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 lots of rods. Um, the reason I do that is because I can have six constructors running on a set if I divide, if I split it three ways. So down here, I had taken it and split my belt three directions to split the product. So here it goes out one, two, and three. Uh, one goes down, one goes up to this set and winds around, and the other one goes up the second belt and winds around. Those go up to the next two floors. Once they get up there, they release iron rods and they come out the doors above. So you got your iron rods going out. They're continuing up the belt where the where the um, ingots left off and continuing upstairs to the next two floors above it. So the floors four and five are my screw production. Uh, and they're gonna come down, produce the screws, and then all the screws are coming right back down on this belt uh, in a double formation from the floor four and floor five, respectively. And then I'm putting them into a storage unit for now. Um, I haven't done much with them, I'm just grabbing them. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed part two of this series. I'm gonna get a little bit more into building theory in the next episode. And you'll get to see uh, why this isn't the most efficient build that I've done. Now, um, it's kind of hard to talk about. I set it all up and had a really good setup. But most of that has to do with the way these are laid out. Um, I can actually pick up some speed on, on my process if I need to. Everything's on hold at the moment. But when I really need to get down to it, this setup I have going on here is not the most efficient. And we'll look at that here um, in the next episode. Thanks for watching.